and I know that you guys love JJ. He does not love belong. JJ. He does not belong in the conversation with the quarterbacks I just named. He's not in that conversation, yeah. right? But now, now I'm gonna get disrespectful. Let me ask you a question. No, just, no, wait, no. Wait, we're moving on. Just, wait, no, wait, just, we're not gonna let quick. JJ slander. Happen this, on this. This isn't JJ this Slander. Time. This isn't JJ Slander. This isn't JJ Slander. I'm just asking the question. All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Scarlet Blue Show. It is perfect weather here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So I'm of course doing this outside. Yep. It's been it's, it's been really hot, but it's been beautiful, except for that uh, rainstorm. That was uh yeah, crazy storms here. Yeah. Also, bros, I didn't tell you about this, did I? Yeah, well, he told me. He didn't tell the fans. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't tell you. So, yeah, everyone. Um, So, at my job, I was working with the skill saw and kind of chopped my fingers. Like, they're still attached. So, we're all good here. I, I just can't type or, you know, I can still use a saw. I just can't type, which kind of sucks. But I'm fine. I'm healthy. I'm alive. I just want everyone to know that. My thing, I'll maybe, maybe one day I'll post the fingers on here. You never know. <laughs> I don't think I should do that, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. So Garrison texts me, says he's he had to go to the ER the other day. <laughs> I'm thinking it was something serious, and he's got a little scratch on his finger. So a scratch, a scratch. Yeah. The part pick of my, I thought the pick would be worse. Part of the part of the tip, of my finger's gone. Oh well, you don't need that anyways. <laughs> so, all right. Well, um, oh, a couple of things, a couple of things on the docket. Mm-hmm. First and foremost. Here, tell us about that delicious drink behind you, which looks almost empty. Dude, no, I took it to a friend's house and we made a bunch of cocktails. And luckily, I have two more of them. <laughs> it's but, good I stuff, mean, man. I mean, dude, yeah, I mean, it, it really is. Um, guys, SDB stock to bar vodka. Go get it at your near, like, it's Meyer Family Fair, uh, Spartan Nash. You can go get them there, man. Um, it's a great drink if you like vodka. I'm, I, you know what? It's funny, Bryce. I'm not much of a vodka guy, but that's my vodka. Really? That's my that that's my choice of vodka. And yeah. it is, and it will be the official drink of the 2024 season here at the Scarlet and Blue Show. So. Indeed. Indeed. Hey, uh, two things of reflection. One, first one, mm-hmm. can you believe that we started this show almost a year ago and one of our teams won a natty? And now this year, the other team is potentially in line. I mean, you what second best favorites behind Georgia? Yeah. Are you yeah. the threat the th- the top favorite. Uh we're second behind Georgia, which yeah. I which so, I agree with, which I agree with. But yeah. Yeah. What a what a way to be. Second thing of reflection. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. oh sorry, go ahead. Do you have something? Oh no, I, I was gonna say, yeah, you're right, man. It's great school. I mean, great time to be alive. I mean, I'm a buckeye. This is normal for me. But I understand that for you, this is you know, it's new territory and I'm I'm happy for you. So yeah, yeah. Everyone Kinda. 30 and below. Uh, who's a Buckeye fan is saying, yeah, of course, everyone who's older understands that <laughs> this is coming to an end. Um, second thing is just the last two videos, a ton of uh, like positive feedback, comments. Yeah. We appreciate that. I think that I'm sure that helps the algorithm in some way, shape, or form. But more than that, we appreciate the, the support. We have a ton of fun doing this. Mm-hmm. And I know it's only June, and we got, I think, 65 days now till the season starts something like that yeah and people are people already get excited so we appreciate the love yeah man uh, it's dude like the amount of comments that have been on there it's really cool seeing everyone going back and forth and um uh i i'm really appreciative i know bryce is and uh like i mean you guys follow us you guys subscribe to us if you haven't yet please do hit that like button but uh we're very appreciative and uh honestly it's humbling bryce just thinking that just thinking that 300, people, 300 plus people care about what we have to say. And so, yeah. um, yeah, man, it's cool. And thank you. Yep. Indeed. Indeed. All right. Well, let's kick it off here. Um, mm-hmm. A couple of things that we can just talk about here. Garrison, I'm going to let you choose the first one. You're, I know you're a big cover three guy, big Bud Elliott. Yes. Guy. A huge fan of Bud He Elliot. has, yeah, he has a good, he had a pretty good tweet. Was it yesterday? Or was it yes. today? Uh, I think he dropped his um, blue chip ratio BCR yesterday, I believe. I think it was yes, yesterday. 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 Yep. And um, 
I mean, and just and just so everyone knows the blue chip ratio, what what it basically does, I'm gonna kind of water it down here. Uh, so apo apologies, but Elliot, but it it shows the amount of four and five star, aka blue chip prospects that are needed to win a national championship. Um, I think you guys might be the lowest at 54, I believe, but uh, it does that. Transfers are not included. Um, so, um, yeah, man, it's, um, it's, it's honestly, I think he's been doing it since, I think he said 2013, I could be wrong. I think 2013. And it's a good measurement on the teams that have a chance to win a national championship. And, um, so yeah, that, that's what it is for anyone that didn't know, but, uh, at number one, you have Ohio state at 90%, uh, BCR. Then you got Bama at 88, Georgia at 80, uh, some other notables, Oregon's at 76. Six, uh, Notre Dame's at sixty-seven. That surprised That's me. that. Uh, yeah, that is surprising. Yeah, uh, you got Penn State at sixty-one, and then uh, you find Michigan at fifty-six. Uh, I think that's fourteenth, right above Auburn at fifty-three, which is crazy that they're at fifty-three and they're so bad. But um, yeah, just what are your thoughts on uh, on the BCR? Yeah, I think it's interesting. Which is a great I, pizza, by the way. Bacon, bacon chicken ranch is a great pizza. But um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's an interesting stat, man. It's an interesting stat. I, I, mm -hmm. We've talked about this a lot on the show. I think – I really do think Transfer Portal changes this and impacts – uh, makes this have less of an impact. I, did you read his PBS Sports article? I don't know if you got a chance to read that. No. But, about yeah, he, he had – uh, a header to a section how has this stat performed in the past and you look back and it's it is it, it's pretty interesting so it, it says basically in 2023 michigan won with a 54 percent mark mm. uh georgia won with a 77 and an 80 percent the year before bama 83 lsu 64 clemson 68 bama in 2017 80 and then Clemson in 16, 52, so two points lower than yeah. uh, Michigan also, was this last lowest. year. But they had that is the lowest, named, yeah. But they had a guy named Deshaun Watson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that team was that team was fun. Yeah. And Ohio, you guys are 68 percent in 2014 in the Florida State, which is the pre playoffs. I don't really count as much. Right. But it's interesting, man. It's interesting. Um, it's just an interesting stat. It's it's uh, yeah. I don't know, man. I th I think at the end of the day, you know how I kind of feel about recruiting. I think it's important. Mm -hmm. I think development is huge, and then the transfer portal even things out. I do think though the, the, the transfer portal does not the transfer portal does not even things out. And but and but Elliot has said multiple times, it is nowhere near the, the at the success rate as just great recruiting. It's nowhere near. But I, and, I and think. Because, go ahead. I'm sorry, and he also said that um, when you go on two four seven, and you see the the ratings for transfers, he, I, I think he exactly said it's in his, it's it's an, um, what's the word I'm looking for? In, not uh, the word, it's it, it's like an infant. Um, what's the word I'm looking for, Bryce? Um, it's his infant sta oh, sorry, it's in his infant stages. That's what that's what he said. And so, okay. like, the ratings on there, they're not as accurate as they would be for the high school recruiting. And, again, a lot of the guys that are transferring in the transport, look, look at the sheer number of kids that transfer. It's, there's not a lot of high-end guys doing that. You don't, you don't see a lot of five-stars transferring. You don't see that, – that's not what you see. So it, it has not evened out anything. Because if that was the case, Colorado would be a national champion. Okay. So I I guess you guys got two potentially starters who are five stars out of the transfer portal this year. Mm -hmm. Caleb Downs, Quinshawn mm -hmm. Junkins. So I don't know if that's completely I think, I think true. Quin, I think Quinshawn was a three-star or four-star. He's like a three-star or a low four-star. Okay. But so then even to that point, you would say he's a top running back in the country, even though he wasn't highly rated. He He's proven himself on the field. Yes. And I would I would take that over a five star coming out of high school. 
That's the exception, not? not the rule. That's the exception, not the rule. So that's my point. My point is that if you – so Michigan has 54%. They wanted this year as 54%. Mm-hmm. I believe that there are gaps that the transfer portal can fill in that could even out that number. Now, will it change the number? No, because it's based off metrics. It's based off ratings. But if you're at 54% and you fill in these gaps with linemen, you know, maybe certain position players, you look at our edges, Josiah Stewart, guys like that, playmakers coming in, changes. I think it changes the impact there. So I, I agree. I agree. But, Recruiting, but, 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 you have to recruit. You have to so develop. Let me, have to let me have ask you a question. How many of your starters are transfers? From last year's team? So left tackle, mm-hmm. transfer. Um, we had, D, let's see. D end. Yeah, D, well, the D end rotated those four guys. So you had oh. Harrell and uh, McGregor. Mm-hmm. But then you Derek Moore. Um, then, you, yeah, he transfers in. Um. One transfer corner. Yeah, corner, starting corner. So like transfers my, my, in. So and so my whole point is asking you that is recruiting is still above that for the simple fact that mo- like most of your stars yes, are not agreed. transfers. They're not like I, I like, like don't get me wrong, yeah. We have Caleb Downs, we got Quinshawn Judkins, but I mean Quinshawn's gonna be sharing the ball. But I get uh getting a guy like Caleb Downs out of the transfer portal is not normal. That's that's not normal at all. Like I said, five stars don't usually transfer. So I don't know. Like I don't think it evens it out. I think like I don't think last year you guys won because you guys had it had had to do with it, but you didn't win because you guys had transfer portal guys. You won because you had a veteran team. They stuck together, and they had very talented guys at very key positions. So I I don't I think that had more like I which I think also had to do with you guys winning with a fifth four percentile in your BCR. So yeah. um sure, sure. Cause because sure. he also he says because he also says in the article explaining the um explaining uh the, the, the 15 teams cult things like culture are not put into this. So you also got to remember things like that. Yeah, yeah the the this metric isn't like directly to tied to team success. It's a piece no. of it. Yes. And it's not so, a, yeah, man. Uh, which he also says, and it's not a, uh, it's, it's not saying that you're for sure going to make the playoff. Right. You know, so. Right. Right. But like many other things helps your odds dramatically. If that number's up, and I, I, I stand by this 15, potentially a 15 game season, you need depth and depth comes with recruiting. Mm-hmm. So it's a big deal. I'm, I'm, it is important. I think, yeah, I think it's a, a really fascinating metric. I think. Yeah. I think you look at the Clemson and 16 team with this, a good quarter. Like who else is on? Was, was DeAndre Hopkins on that team? I can't remember if he was on. I don't think he was. Mm, Oh, no. I think he was with Taj Boyd. But like, yeah, who else was on that Clemson, that 2016 Clemson team? I'm missing Um, somebody. Um, wasn't Sammy Watkins because he was with Taj Boyd. Um, Bro, I'm gonna be honest with you, Bryce. I don't remember that team. I I know Deshaun Mike Watson. Williams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, no, but that's the point. If we can't really pick out guys, <laughs> that tells yeah, you everything. You know. It was the Deshaun Watson then, show, man. And then that Auburn, the Cam Newton Auburn team is another example of that. Like I I don't think this metric was <laughs> available at that time, but I would love to see Dude. what that one was. I'm Dude, sure someone could fu- find that. Funny stat about I think. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that at the tail end of Cam Newton's career, there was no one else from that team on an NFL roster. Yeah. That that is absurd. Shocking. That, that's why I think he's the greatest college football player ever. I I it's I I say him and Reggie Bush. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, L oh, oh, you don't have this on the list. Well, Garrison. Wait, yeah, you don't have this on the yeah. list. Speaking of Reggie. You want to talk about the top duo in the college football? The running back. That, that running was back crazy. Duo? You said that, you want right, to talk yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> I, 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 all right. Um, Adam Brenneman, that you've probably seen him on social, basically made the claim 
that JJ and Blake were the <laughs> best, greatest <laughs> running back quarterback duo of all time. You don't even believe that. You, I don't. I, you I wish don't I did. That. I wish I did. I wish I could. I could play the meathead sports fan right now. I just, just absurd. I, if, if you got to give it, like, I, how can you say that and then have Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne in that conversation? Or yeah, have, I, I thought Matt Liner or Reggie Bush was a good one too. <laughs> I, I love my I, guys. You know that, but <sighs> I mean, whereas I even, whereas I put up, I put up, a, I put up a question. Uh, I even use Pat Pat White and Steve Slayton. And just go check the sheer numbers of what those guys did. They didn't win a national championship, but fun fact, everybody, Pat White is the only college football player in history to win four bowl games. Um, I mean, the, the, their numbers were – That's a great trivia stat. Dude, <laughs> the numbers were absurd. I mean, Pat White threw 64%. I, I thought he'd do like 50, something, 59. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think – Matt Liner and Reggie Bush both have Heisman's. Matt Liner and Reggie Bush were fir- were both first team All Americans. And I think with the the problem with this conversation, and with with, Br- with Brennan saying that, is that when you talk about best duo, you are talking about just the players and their abilities and their capabilities. JJ McCarthy is not forget the same planet. He's not in this dude. He's nowhere <laughs> near. Hey, Matt- hey. Hey, listen, and, and if you and if you want to like like Blake can be in this conversation because he was a first team All American. You know what you know what the difference is between JJ McCarthy, Blake Corum, Reggie Bush, and Matt Liner is? Only one of those guys has never been an All American, and that's JJ McCarthy. So I <sighs> Tommy Eichenberg was an All American though. So you know. He, he had a lot of tackles. He played really well that year. I mean, dude, I mean think think about um I also put Sam Sam Bradford and Demarco Murray. Ooh, that's a sneaky good combo too. I, I just and then like and, the, and let me one. bring and let me bring Ohio State to this. Now it's kind of hard to put them in this conversation because they only had one year together. Justin JK Fields and J.K. Dobbins are better duo than those two, and it's not even close. And so I, it's just it's, I push back a little more on that one, but. Wait, 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 it's, okay. a, it's a compelling argument. Wait, it's a compelling wait, no, argument. No, push, push back, Bryce. Tell me what JJ McCarthy does better than Justin Fields. I think Justin. I don't know. Like, Justin Fields, all of his receivers were first round draft picks. So hey, so are so are Joe Burrow's. Who cares? Joe Burrow won a Heisman, though. That team was stacked. That's a fair. That's a well, fair response. That team well, was loaded. Okay. Well, Justin Fields is never going to win that Heisman that year. For the simple, I mean, it, just for the simple fact, even if Joe didn't have that year, Chase that's Young. Same year. That's right. Yeah, Chase Young stole votes, and J.K. Dobbins finished fifth or sixth. Yeah, he was never going to win that's that fair. trophy. So I mean, it's I I, I just if you want to, they are definitely a top ten duo in because you have the the if you want to put in the accolades and things of that nature and i know that you guys love jj he does not love belong JJ. he does not belong in the conversation with the quarterbacks i just named he's not in that conversation i i just yeah i mean i, I know and, i know and, dude and, I, I, and, and this isn't me rat this isn't me coming down on no, I know. I know it's not. I, I'm just I know trying to be are. very honest. <laughs> I'm being very honest with what I, I say this, dude. I would love to see JJ in a, in a different offense. There's probably I would have loved to see him in a different offense, see what he could have done. But throughout the US, he wasn't. And he had one game over 300 yards last season. Right. But now, now I'm going to get disrespectful. Let me ask you a question. No, just, no, wait, no. Wait. We're moving on. Just, wait, no, wait, just, I'm not going to let quick. JJ slander. Happen this, on this. This is a JJ slander. This, this is a JJ slander. This is a JJ slander. I'm just asking the question. I'm just asking the question. Are they a better duo just on capabilities than McSorley and and uh Barkley? No, uh well Barkley carries that, so no. Doesn't J does, doesn't Give me JJ Blake, and Blake doesn't doesn't Blake carry that in this conversation? No. All no. right, all right, all right. I think say I I don't I, I love Blake. Blake isn't Saquon. Saquon was unbelievable. I'm so happy you said that. 
Um, yeah. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I'm, Michigan I'm, fan. I'm, if you were I'm so proud. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I I love Blake, but Saquon I think was one of the best college yeah. college running backs I've ever seen. And, and one of these I days, mean, his highlight tape against Iowa. Go back and just watch that, everybody. Oh go my watch. Gosh. That or was the, or the USC game. video game esque, or the USC game. Yeah, it was video game esque. That's crazy. And one of these days yeah. we're gonna have to have a conversation because I'm tired of people saying that Barkley's better than Zeke Elliott. I'm 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 in college. I'm done with that. Like I'm tired of that now. So one of these days we can have that conversation. But um, ooh, that'd be a good one. I'll I'll be I put on my Penn State. I put on my South Christian gear, and that's the same as Penn State helmet. And yeah, and, like, and and take Barkley's side on that. Saquon Barkley, Mister One Rush, negative three, five yards, negative two, fifty yards. That's him. <laughs> Picking stats. Our lives are a collection of experiences, moments of happiness or times of great loss. First homes, new babies, property loss, even heartache. Knowing that your insurance provider is always close by offers comfort. At Farm Bureau Insurance, the experience you get with our local trusted advisors is different. From financial security to a helping hand, Farm Bureau understands the experience matters. Find an agent who can protect what matters to you. Hey, well, let's 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 stay on the topic of recruiting. Yep. Boys Blue, heating up. Yeah. Went from 40th to 15th over the last since we recorded. I think that's what it's yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so our average is only like six points behind you. No, you know, no. I, I think you guys are ranked sixth in terms of average. It's uh, it's it's not a it's a really good recruiting. Uh, oh, I don't say really good. It's a it's a uh, it's a really good recruiting class. It is. I know you want to say it. It's a good recruiting class. It's a really good recruiting class. Um, I'm. I'm very interested to see um, if they get uh, Marsh or um, Taz, uh, two wide yeah. receivers. Um, and Taz, man, if it wasn't for his size, he would be ranked higher. That go look at his offer list; you would think he was a five star. Um, yeah. Uh, you guys, just, I can't, his name is blanking on blanking on me. You guys just signed a wide receiver. Uh, yeah, well, Washington. Oh, what's his name? Yeah, yeah, Washington. Yeah, you, you know, Washington. Six, six three, one ninety wide receiver or one eighty wide receiver. Um, I had to explain to some guys. So some guys are saying he's really fast. No, he's not. Uh, I'm a track guy. If you run an eleven seven your sophomore year, you're you're not fast. If you ever, and if you run eleven five three the next time, you're not fast. Um, but. Doesn't mean he can't do speed training. I I, I watched his highlight film. I mean, he's a he's a big body, and he can go get the ball, and that's what you want. Like some, and so, sometimes you need that in guys. You know they don't have to be overly fast. Antonio Brown isn't that fast. People a lot of people don't know that he's good at route yeah. running, and and if, cool. and if and if Bellamy can uh, assist him on that, and he I, I he could be he's, he's a good prospect. He's a good prospect, and, yeah. and especially because of his size. Yeah, we uh, he is 6'3", 180. He's that's coming small, out of high school. That's a small guy. Yeah, we are. Oh, let's see, in, in the ranking, an average ranking. Oh, can I filter this here? Here we go. You guys are ninety three point eight six. Michigan is ooh ninety one point one eight. Mm. Yeah, um, and you guys have eight more recruits. Yeah, it actually just went down. Well, I mean, Bryce, the more recruits you guys get, trust me, yours is going to go down too. Uh. We 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 did just sign um a few a, a few Ohio kids a tight end an offensive yeah. lineman, um Cleveland boys dude we we have a if you look at our recruiting class at the bottom I think the bottom four five you'll see a bunch you'll see three stars in there and they're all Ohio kids and I and I really like that uh one being a running back too but yeah, like, I really like that dude at positions this like is, old this is a real Ohio State fan Gary. Guys, this is a real Ohio State fan talking right now. He says he knows the significance of getting the Ohio kid. Well, you said what? Sorry, continue. You said I what? said you're you're a real Buckeye fan. You know the importance of getting the Ohio kids. Well, it's not so. Well, yes, there's an importance of getting the Ohio kids. I mean, Ohio as a state is one of the it's a top ten recruiting place in uh state in the in the, in the country. But when it comes to positions like offensive linemen, don't get me wrong. I want Sanders. I want him on. I want him to be a Buckeye. 
but I think positions like offensive lineman and tight end, you can get a three star, and it and it it be okay. It can be okay. Like it can be. Yeah. I I just think that at positions like that, you you're okay getting a three star. There's nothing wrong with being a three star. Those kids bust their arses to get to where they are. Um. I know sometimes we may rag on it for other fan bases that will I'll go nameless, but um no I mean I'm dude, listen we're we're sitting at the top right now at 299 points I have nothing to complain about right now in Ohio State recruiting Ohio State recruiting is booming uh I think we have is Na- we have twelve is Naeem offered transfer is he gonna flip I don't think he will Did I hear rumors of that or is that not gonna happen I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think I trust that. you. Yeah. Um, he, that the Sanchez family and shout and shout out to Mama Sanchez. Uh, she follows me on Instagram, on Twitter, so that's really cool. Uh, but uh, their family and even the the, the recruits, especially uh, Devin Sanchez, they they are the recruiters. This class of twenty twenty five, they are putting in a lot of work and putting in the onus on themselves as as uh, as recruits for Ohio State and. Uh, and commit commits to bring in guys to keep talking to guys to, to make um to make relationships with guys as Tavian St. Clair said so that, that's really cool to see I love that takes the onus off the off the um the coaches and usually I mean you would assume kids want to talk they'd rather they can they speak the same language as these other recruits more so than they do some 50 year old guy so <laughs> yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah I, it's it's I think that's significant, man. I it, it's the difference between I think it's a culture thing. I do. I think you can come in here and and flip checks and mm-hmm. and do the uh twenty twenty two X A and M strategy, but that that ain't gonna do it. You need guys bought in, and that starts with guys recruiting others. Yeah, Sharon Moore just t- uh, tweeted the eye the eyeball emoji two hours ago. I don't care what he gotta say. It's fun. That's fun. It's fun. Recruiting is fun. He can kick rocks. Hey, hey, he's undefeated against you guys. Uh, Julius, Julius. Oh, okay. Anyways, we can talk about recruiting forever. So, oh no, we're um, gonna stay on. We'll, 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 let's talk about a specific recruit real quick and his insane recruitment yes. right now. Oh yeah, this is nuts. Yeah. So, Jordan Davidson, um. Highly touted recruit. Uh, I think currently, not I think he is currently down to Michigan, Oregon, Ohio State, and Alabama. Uh, I yeah. think maybe a month ago I said to you, I think he's going to go to Oregon. He does have a crystal ball there now. Um, I think mm. was it not less than a week ago he was actually crystal ball to Michigan. But I mean, so these are the the things that are going on, Bryce. I'm being said out, and I actually want to hear what you think about this. So. You hear about Ohio State uh, kind of just, you know, the, the, they're softening on them. And I'm, and I'm happy. I was listening to the voice of college football on the Michigan channel, and they, they, they actually said the same thing. Like, Ohio State cooled on him. So to hear a Michigan, a Michigan sh- channel say that, that's actually pretty cool. And because and that it does seem like that's what happened. Um, people saying that he came – People from Ohio State saying that he came there at 240 pounds. Also, other rumor people. These are rumors. Things. These are rumors uh, that he's you know family's asking for a big bag. Uh, and I, then you have with uh, Michigan. I, with Michigan, we we heard that they're trying to throw him a bag. I can't imagine that they're going to throw a bag that Oregon would throw at him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I saw and and you know I don't. With that 240 pound thing came out, I didn't want to like jump on that. But then I saw a video. <laughs> and I, and I, Bryce, did you see it? I did. How much do you think he weighed in that video? Yeah, yeah. Was, was, yeah he, two, was, he, two, that. was he 225 in that? And, and then, and man, I don't want to do this, but this is, we're talking football right now. We're just talking football. When, did you see him make a cut or did you see him, see him make like an old man hitch? When he tried to, Cut back to the. I think inside. I saw the hitch. Wait, is there a cut one? I missed that. Dude, he like she tries to make a cut, but it's not a sharp. It's more <laughs> like a. I. I'm very interested to see where this how this recruitment goes. I do think it's gonna go to Oregon. But yeah, I still. I I I don't remember this much hoopla 
being around a uh, a recruit in a while. I mean, I mean, I, I guess not since uh, what's his nuts the wire the quarterback for um yeah, he had like what, he was like fifteen million dollars or something like that that he didn't get paid from Florida. Oh yeah, yeah, and he signed up soon. Yeah, and so um no, I mean it's interesting. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Yeah, this is where I get I get real torn between player empowerment and the broken system because what this kid's doing is playing all the channels and and, mm-hmm. and accessing all the channels to get as much you know following attention as possible. And you're hitting some of the biggest fan bases: Bama, Michigan, Ohio State, Oregon. And I'm not saying he's just doing it for the money. Don't don't mm-hmm. don't get it twisted. But I think he is doing his best to get the most of what he can get out of. Like I saw him. He was had like a promo where it's it was some some sports site I don't know he tweeted it it's probably on Twitter okay. and he's like hey show support fan bases stand up and now this brand's getting the attention because all of these fan bases are tweeting and again they're the largest fan bases in college football and he's getting the attention yeah. I'm sure and again good for him like kid go get yeah. paid I I would tell I would do that I would tell my son to do that to go get paid but then then you bring it into the broken system in college football and it's just. Is this really the way it should be going? Because this, and, and then the question is, and this sounds like loser talk. Like if if we don't get him, this is the my excuse. <laughs> so this is me saying this before I know what happens. But then it's like, do you want a kid like this? Now, I don't want to attack him as a person. Yeah, I, he could be a great kid, and he could just be super business savvy. And if that's the case, awesome. Um, but or he could be someone who's kind of looking for the attention. And, and I'm not saying he is that. Jeez, oh, this is going to get all cut up. I'm not saying he is. I don't know him, but I do think it's, I do think it is just, it's an interesting situation that college football is in that college football steals because this kid's a top, top recruit. And so, so yeah, man, I, I don't know. I, I told you this, I had some somewhat of a source, you know, hear from them mm-hmm. that, that he committed over the, over the visit. And that was back when he had one crystal ball to Ohio state. And, and then it, and then it changed. I don't, and then it changed, and so maybe he did commit, and then he I, – I don't know. So I'm very curious to see because he commits – we're recording this on Thursday the 27th, so he's committing on Friday, I believe, right? Yes. So is it by the time this comes out – let's see, I'm pulling it up here. I don't know. I can't find it. Oh, yeah, uh, this five-star fans was the Twitter account that he did that that thing from. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So I think he's I think he's committing tomorrow, and so by the time this comes out, we'll probably know what happens. I think Hayes fought set. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna, it's gonna send it's gonna send Twitter on us. It's gonna, it's gonna spiral on Twitter, but, uh, but yeah. hey, you know, and hey, I, hey, I wish nothing but the best for the kid. So um, oh yeah, now seeing now seeing June twenty eighth tomorrow. Yep. I hope wherever he goes, he has success, except for against Ohio State, because he's coming to Ohio State. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, two of his options are against you guys, so we'll see. Sure. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, man. And then I heard some other guys were going to commit or were hot, and then I think one of them is crystal ball to you guys. So this is why I don't really follow because <laughs> the moment I get hooked in, things change. <laughs> And again, these kids are doing what's best for them. So <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna go back and play with my dog and drink SDB vodka responsibly. Dude, uh, responsibly. 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 No man, you know it's all right. Hey man, it's, it's, this is the new college football we're in, you know. And yeah, I what think. Do you, what do you do? Speaking what of do new you college do? football. I know. I know. Well, speaking of new college football, but did you get all worked up about these? rankings no but i do no i didn't get worked up but i do have a problem with Co- listen wh- how <laughs> is Colorado- i didn't get worked up here we go <laughs> I- <laughs> how does colorado have the same offensive rating as ohio state i'm cool with an 89 i thought that was i thought that was a i, I thought that was fake but then when I see those bums in Colorado who don't – people talk about the Ohio State offensive line. Go watch theirs. Please, go watch theirs. They don't have our receiver room. Push cheese. Dude, they don't have a receiver room. Uh, your starting running back would have been our third string this year. 
Um, well, let's just let's bust through this. So one Georgia, two Oregon, three Bama, four Texas, and five Ohio State, and then tied for fifth, really, all with mm-hmm. eighty nine Ohio State, LSU, Miami, Colorado, Missouri, and then Clemson at number ten. Why is Clemson at 10? Yeah, I don't know how Cle- why is Clemson at 10? I, I don't know. <laughs> and and then uh why, wait, and, why is Miami at seven? What's do I there's something about Miami? Cam, I don't know. They got talent and they got Cam Ward. Oh, they got uh, Cam Ward. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. on defense, I don't know. See, I don't know why your fan base is all up in arms about the 90 rating on defense. It, I, I so I think Ohio State's an Ohio Yeah, that State. feels fair. Yeah, I, I, and I'm trying to explain to these Michigan fans, like like Moose, who's a who's an awesome guy. But I told him, I said, dude, he, he said Kenneth Grant was the second best defensive tackle in the nation. I, stop. Stop. There, 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 there's no statistic, no evidence that says that. <laughs> uh, and then he brought up Barham. There's some and, good D tackles. And then, but, and so, listen, man, like I told you, Bryce, Michigan fans don't watch college football. They watch Michigan. Uh, no, stop! Don't don't <laughs> chunk us all like, together, I, dude. And then, and then um, he talked. He, he brought Barham, your linebackers. He named three linebackers, and then he named Will Johnson. Sir, you play four DBs. You need depth, 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 depth. That's why Real you're quick, 90. If you haven't seen it. Ohio State number one, ninety six. Mm-hmm. Georgia number two. Oregon number three. This is defense, by the way. Alabama four, Clemson five, and uh, you guys are tied, aren't you? Think, well, really, got... if you want to look at it, you're we're third. all tied. Yeah, Oregon. Yeah, we're tied for third. So I don't. So I'm, I'm like, what are we? I don't talk? know why people are. <laughs> <laughs> why would they put us last though? Come on. So Oregon, Bama, Clemson, Notre Dame, Michigan, and, and then, then Texas, and then, Penn State, and Utah. then look, look who, look at like, uh, do you have the the full list on you? I know we're, we're gonna we're gonna end here shortly. Top twenty five. Yeah. I, uh, I I I saw uh man, we, we've been mentioning Bud Elliott all day, all 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 the show. He he posted about this and about some of the teams that are up there. And he brought Nebraska's defense and Iowa's defense. How is Iowa not top ten? That's a great call. That they have literally had a championship defense for the last Four or five years? They're 13. That, that, that's that's they're, ridiculous. They're, that's ridiculous. Well, you want to look at it by their rating. I mean, they're tied with Texas, Penn State, Florida, Ohio, Florida State, Oklahoma at 88. So they're technically – they're tied I don't, for I don't four. think they should be tied with Texas. Texas doesn't play defense like Iowa. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. Good good call out there, yeah. It's I'm, – I'm, I'm still going to play the game. I'm still going to buy it. Of course, yeah. Oh yeah, and this is where yeah. I need to get you know where it's still June. I got to get you know back into the spreadsheets here and looking at all the football stuff. But like Virginia mm-hmm. Tech is fourteen. Like, did I miss something here? Is Virginia nah, Tech on the defense? They're, they're going to be. They are going to be a sleeper in the ACC. Are you all right? All right, I trust you. Mm-hmm. 